Hi, my name is Kevin Hickerson, and I'm president of the Fairfax Education Association. Today, I have Delegate Carrie Delaney from the House of Delegates District 67. Welcome. Good Thank to see you. you. Good to see you. Today, um, we are uh, having Carrie here today because we want to talk about uh, the recess bill that was recently passed and, and what you have to think about it. So for our, our members and for people watching, what are the benefits of unrestricted uh, playtime for children? Well, we learned a lot about the benefits of, of just that unstructured playtime for kids uh, while we worked on the bill this, this session. We had a group of parent advocates who approached me about this bill and just had mountains of evidence that showed how kids' brains work better when they've had the chance to have that unstructured downtime. Um, it actually yields better learning. And so there's a lot of benefits for more recess in uh, the nature of more physical activity, uh, more time for kids for that social development where they have the chance to you know, meet with their friends and learn to work out some of their problems. But from the academic standpoint, the ability for the, the child's brain to be able to decompress and create the right uh, kind of, of learning environment Environment, when they come back into the classroom, they're just that much more ready to focus and to learn and to be better students. That's a, it sounds good. So being down in Richmond, what were some of the barriers that you had um, getting this legislation passed? Well, I think with, with any bill that, that you put down, uh, put forward in Richmond, you want to make sure that the language that your bill contains really does what you intend it to do. You, you want to avoid any unintended consequences. And so that was our biggest, uh, our biggest challenge with the bill, um, was to really make sure that we were creating a piece of legislation that allowed our localities to, to have the option to deliver something and in a way that uh, could, could allow the administrators to you know, apply this at their schools and, and have that flexibility. And so capturing just the right language that allowed for the students to have that increase in, in, uh, in time without taking away from some of the other important parts of the academic day, which is why we, we decided to, uh, to start with, um, with having it uh, recess count as, as part of the instructional hours, and that was a, a key. Because you know you have five and a half instructional hours, you know that, that time's already taken. We don't want to make the school day any longer. So working with some of those realities to say how do we include recess without prolonging the school day, and how do we make sure that recess can be part of instructional time without cutting on some of the specials that we know, um, you know, our, our parents and advocates also see as, as extremely important for our students. Right, and ultimately, uh, a question I'm going to get from my members is that how will this benefit teachers and our support staff. Well, I think that, you know, I, I come from this from a parent's perspective. And so I imagine teachers, like parents, we know how when kids have had that time to run around and have some free play, our, our kids are, are better. Their behavior is improved. Their learning is, is improved. And so I think from, from the teacher's perspective, uh, the enthusiasm that we've seen is that we're, we're going to help our, our students be better learners. And so when they do come back and sit in that classroom and are ready to hear the lesson and to do their work, their brain's going to be that much more honed and focused and ready to perform. Have you heard any feedback from school staff or parents yet on the on the bill that was passed? Oh, absolutely, because we what we're seeing now is the localities beginning to implement and change their policies. We're seeing recess times doubled in some counties. We're seeing it, you know, at minutes uh, added in, in other counties, um, and people are just thrilled. We're hearing really great feedback, um, both from administrators, teachers, and and definitely parents, uh, to see that you know this is a change that has has been needed and wanted, and we just kind of had to solve the puzzle. Of how to make it possible, and uh, we're really thrilled we were able to do that in Richmond. And that's what good legislation does, is that it's bipartisan, it gets across the aisles, and it helps out everybody involved. Um, take this moment to, to mention that this can't be done without endorsing our, our great elected officials. And last time, the FEA, BEA um, endorsed Carrie uh, for her House of Delegates seat, and it, it couldn't have been done without donations to our political action committee. So next time when we're out there and we're asking for donations to our political action committee, we definitely need you to be able to donate and open up and be able to uh, put your voice into our activities here at the Fairfax Education Association and the Virginia Education Association. So there again, thank you very much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.